O believers, turn to Allah in sincere repentance, so your Lord may absolve you of your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow. Surah Tahrim, verse 8. Something so light to our tongues, something so easy to say, something so easy to do, Allah sign us here that this can get us to Jannah just by seeking his forgiveness. I still can't get over that fact. Something that's so easy will get us the biggest reward that there ever is for this hard test that we are in, which is this dunya. SubhanAllah. And Allah says, just by seeking forgiveness, I may absolve you of your sins and grant you um, gardens under which rivers flow. Do not offer those. Eternal. And this, for me, just shows the power of istighfar. And this is why it should be a daily practice into all of our lives. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Hidayah Podcast. My name is Arafat and I am the host. The Hidayah Podcast is just all about sharing the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. First of all, we're going to talk about actually what is istighfar. Istighfar is seeking forgiveness and this is mostly in the form of dhikr. Dhikr is words of remembrance or remembering Allah and we tend to do this by saying astaghfirullah. I seek forgiveness. I seek forgiveness from Allah. Um, But today inshallah we will delve into the beauty of istighfar, the importance of istighfar, the different ways of istighfar and how why how it impacts our life how istighfar impacts our life and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so before we do segue into these different uh, topics I would like you to grab a drink grab a little notepad I don't know if you're actually gonna take a notepad because I was listening to a podcast the other day and she told us to um take a notepad out and I was like I wanted to but I didn't but um yeah you should because I am gonna list <laughs> actually know it's a bit hypocritical do you do what you want to do but yeah it would be really beneficial if you take a notepad out and you do um write some notes i'm sorry the audio is a bit all over the place and the lighting is a bit all over the place but yeah um at least i'm here and i've started it so bismillah if you really deep and think about the amount of sins we do on a daily it's absolutely crazy um you probably would not be able to count all of your sins and that is why istighfar is such it's such an easy thing to do because of the um, amount of sins that we can ac- accumulate in a day. And istighfar just washes them away, subhanAllah. And there's other types of dhikr that washes them away. For example, subhanAllah, if you recite a hundred times a day, it washes all your sins away, just like the foam. It doesn't matter how much sins uh, there is. Um, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it's as much as in, in the form of the sea. I'm actually not sure if I remember this hadith correctly, but it had something to do with the form of the sea. Um, but yeah, essentially what I'm trying to say is that um, istighfar also washes away your sins. And with that, it purifies our hearts. Whenever we sin, there's a black dot placed in our heart. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Sometimes I perceive a veil over my heart and I supplicate Allah for forgiveness a hundred times in a day. This is in um, Hadith Muslim, Riyadh al 1869. But the matter of fact is that it's a cleanser for our souls, a cleanser for our hearts. If the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the best of creation, feels this veil over his heart, that if he if he does a stick for it, basically, in other words, we should be doing it like a hundred times more. In terms of the definitions of it, is a form of remembrance, is a purifier of our heart, um, is a cleanser of our soul and our heart. Also, it made me think about how merciful Allah is. That something that I literally say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, that took me like one second or two seconds. Something that is so easy, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the best knower of everything. He knows how we are as a creation, He knows we're weak. Um, and I think that's also the beauty of istighfar. Like you make an istighfar is telling Allah, you know what? Like I'm weak. I am not able to. I I keep doing mistakes, and I think it also allows us to have that level of humble, humble, humbleness. Yeah, humbleness, and it allows us to actually remember 
that we are weak and that um, it protects from arrogance and all the diseases of the heart, subhanAllah. So that's why um, making istighfar we, um, has an effect on cleansing our hearts because we, we kind of stray away or stay away from um, the, sins, the sins of the hearts, which are, for example, arrogance, um, envy, for example. But if you constantly make istighfar, you're basically telling Allah, you know what, I make mistakes, please forgive me. I am in need of your forgiveness of your forgiveness um and yeah i just thought about that actually it just shows a state of humility to allah and it shows an expression of need from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why we say in to fatiha every day you alone we worship you alone we ask for help also he says that when i was doing some research research istighfar is one of the ways of finding inner peace and tranquility Istighfar purifies one from the physiological result of sins. Istighfar turns evil deeds to good to good deeds. Actually, I, did, I forgot about this. Actually, let me finish reading and then I'll talk. Um, istighfar paves way for the acceptance of prayer. Allah forgives those who sincerely seek forgiveness unconditionally. Yes. So, I forgot about that. That even making istighfar is also an act of ibadah. And it actually, like, subhanAllah, like, isn't Allah the best? Like, we're basically sinning. We just say one word with, of course, full intention and with meaning it. We say, Astaghfirullah. Allah forgives us. And on top of that, he gives us good deeds. Like, what else do we want more? I just think, subhanAllah, that is just so merciful, so gracious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most kind. It's just amazing. Like, I'm literally just in awe of how much love Allah has given us um, and how much ease he has made this religion of islam to be for us because honestly if i was a muslim i literally do not know what i would be doing um like everything's been made easy for us alhamdulillah um like the hadith says if you take one step to him he comes running to you so yeah that subhanallah that's just mind-blowing actually that you make a sin you ask for forgiveness and on top of that you get a good deed subhanallah subhanallah bihamdi um so yeah it also says that it paves way for the acceptance of prayer. This is a big, huge one. I guarantee you now, if you stay committed to saying, to doing istighfar, whenever you're walking, whenever you list, whenever um, you're cooking, set yourself a goal, 500 a day istighfar, do it for a month, subhanAllah, it does pave way for the acceptance of prayer and it also brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also sets your affairs straight, which I will delve into later. Yeah, this is a very important one. Like, who doesn't want to be amongst people that Allah loves? I know I do. And one of the things that... One of the people that Allah loves is the people who constantly repent. People who constantly turn back to Him. Because that actually shows that you're not losing hope in Him. You know who your Lord is. You know that your Lord is Al-Ghafar, Al-Tawwab, Al-Ghafur. The forgiving, the ever forgiven, the repent, um, the acceptor of repentance. So you actually doing this far is showing that actually you have hope in Allah. You know that your Lord is going to forgive you. You know that your Lord loves you and wants to hear you wants to hear your voice and he wants you to seek f- his forgiveness um so yes yeah, subhanallah subhanallah it's so far it's basically like you get so much in a bundle like this is like get one and how do you say it get five you know what i mean like you know buy one get two free yeah what i'm trying to say is that you do one thing and you get so much more uh subhanallah um so yeah I challenge you to do that. Please do that if you don't do it already. Set a timer. Set not a set a timer. Set a goal that you do every each day, and try to find times where you do it. Whether you're walking, normally maybe when you walk somewhere, you put your headphones on. Replace that with some um, istighfar. Um, or after yesterday, you do istighfar. Whenever you're just doing anything, cooking, make sure you do istighfar. Inshallah, and let me know how it goes. Inshallah. Oh my God, this one. Um, yeah, but alhamdulillah actually for this one. Also, I forgot to mention, yeah, for istighfar, another thing that comes with istighfar is that it protects you from the worst worst of shaitan, actually. Um, so because why you, when you're making istighfar, you're conscious that actually Allah will forgive me. And I know sometimes this is not the case, 100% of the times, because sometimes you actually do istighfar and you're like, oh, I stop Allah, like, oh, I've done, I've done, my sin is too bad, is it going to forgive me? But I'm going to do it either way. But the thing is that you actually doing istighfar, you're getting rid of, shaitan coming to you possibility of coming to you and saying you're not good enough you're not do this because you've already sought forgiveness no matter what you do you just say astaghfirullah 
and that's one thing I actually have learned to never never um think that your sin is too big to for Allah to forgive that's even actually an insult to Allah that you think that you, whatever you've done is going to be unforgivable it's going to be unforgivable by Allah like think about the hundred man not the man that killed like 99 people and Allah had mercy if, um Allah had mercy um, on him and he literally like brought the angels. He made him be closer to the town where he wanted to seek repentance and then the angels, um, because he wanted to seek repentance and then the angels said they were fighting over which side he was. Maybe he was closer to um, the town that he was going to to seek repentance or maybe he was closer to the other where he came from. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave that man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave um Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is basically able to forgive all of your sins and to not ever undermine Allah's possibility of that and Allah's capability of that because Allah is capable of everything. He tells us repeatedly, He's al Ghafur al Rahim al Ghafur al Wadud al Ghafur al I'm trying to say al Ghafur al Rahim. That's the one that comes to my head most commonly today in Surah Buruj. I just noticed that Allah paired al Ghafur and al Wadud together once in Surah Buruj. I think across the Quran, and I think that's just beautiful, subhanAllah. The forgiving, the loving. The forgiving and the loving, subhanAllah. And Allah says in Surah Baqarah, verse 222, that he loves those who repent. And if you read the English translation across the Quran, you will see different things that Allah says of the different uh, types of people that he loves. Like, he loves the people who are... Um, that purify themselves. He loves, the, he loves the people who strive for excellence, which is in Surah Imran. Um... So istighfar gets you so much if you can't already tell by this video. He gets you it, like it's just a whole bundle of package and it's something that's so easy. And now I'm actually also gonna list some reasons why istighfar is not so important, even though I already have previously. But the main reason is that it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um is exactly for the same reasons I've mentioned previously. But most importantly, because Allah loves the people who come to him with a sound heart. In um, Quran 26 verse 89, Allah says, The day when neither wealth will be of any use, nor sons, except to one who will come to Allah with a sound heart. This is again linking back to how istighfar is, purifies our hearts. So istighfar is a way for us to be amongst people that come to Allah with a sound heart. And that's the only thing that will be useful for us in the day of judgment. Another thing is that in Surah Baqarah 222, Allah says he loves those who repent. Who doesn't want to be amongst people who Allah loves? If Allah loves you, the angels love you, the people, the creation love you. Um, subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, subhanAllah, sorry. Um, so yeah, this is such an amazing act of worship to get yourself involved in. And if you're already involved in, to increase it. And this is also for me as well. So the ayah that mentioned at the start of this episode was about how Safar can get us to Jannah. SubhanAllah. So the way it's a impact our lives is that it actually paves way for acceptance of your prayer, like I said before. Incorporating this into, into your daily life changes your du'as incredibly. Um, make astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh a hundred times a day. And subhanAllah, it was amazing. It was actually really life changing, subhanAllah. And even through this journey, it made me realize how faulty I am actually. And how in need of Allah's forgiveness I am. Um, so yes, subhanAllah, there's so much that comes with it. And also one way that it impacts your life is that Allah will provide for you. Allah says in Surah Nuh, saying, Seek your Lord's forgiveness, for he is truly most forgiven. He will shower you with abund abundant, I don't know if I'm saying this word right, abund abundant rain, supply you with wealth and children, and give you gardens as well as rivers. This is twice now that we've heard that Istikfar can, gives us, can give us gardens, um, under which rivers flow, basically Jannah, right? SubhanAllah, so something so easy and such a high reward. And Allah here says that He will shower you with abund abundant rain, supply you with wealth and ch children. In other words, through istighfar we have risk. So istighfar also gives us risk. It gives us wealth. It gives it gives us it eases all of your affairs. And I can say that istighfar does is the all of your affairs. Like everything will be set straight. SubhanAllah. Um, and there's just so much goodness that it brings about into your life. And once you start doing the challenge that I've told you that previously, or if you don't incorporate it so far daily, you will start seeing the change in your life. Um, so yeah, also it's so far makes you actually be closer to Allah because you know who your Lord is and you actually grow to have a love for him because of how often he forgives you and how 
often he inspires you with forgiveness with seeking forgiveness subhanallah so sometimes we have to think to ourselves actually i did not seek forgiveness out of my own back actually like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even had mercy on me to actually like inspire me to seek forgiveness subhanallah um so yeah those are some ways that it does um that it does impact it and i have um through back through the sunnah and the quran of course like in surah nuh we can see that and in surah tahrim that was recited at the start of this episode and you can find it in so many other places in the quran but yeah, now we will delve on to actually how to uh, make istighfar. So normally we say, okay, istighfar, yeah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Yes, that's the most basic form. And that's a seek forgiveness from Allah. But this has to come with meaning. You have to mean it and you have to really um, have sincerity when you do it. You can't just be saying, you can't it can't just be word of mouth basically and what really helps is that once you're doing this type of dhikr to not be zoning out try to think about all of your sins that you've done that day and this is not to make you feel bad this is just to make you um be sincere on you seeking forgiveness of allah so i think that's one thing that helped is to actually think about all of your sins whilst you're making this dhikr and to never lose hope, as I said before, always make a sigfar. Because Allah says in Surah Zumar, O Prophet, say, O Prophet, that Allah says, All my servants who have exceeded the limits against the souls do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed all forgiving, the all forgiving, the most merciful. So Allah is telling you here that He's going to forgive you. So don't ever gas at yourself or let shaitan trap you to thinking that He. Allah will not forgive you because Allah is telling you in the Quran here the biggest hidayah that we have that he is going to forgive you so don't take anyone else's words for it take Allah's word for it and really even if whatever you feel whatever if you feel guilty I don't care say astaghfirullah I really mean it and try not to do it again and move on and don't try to overthink and rum, um, ruminate on your sin um yeah just kind of move on say I was sought forgiveness from Allah Allah will help me towards um going forward and try not to go back to it again and if you do go back to it then the whole process again astaghfirullah really with your sin whole sincerity you ask Allah to forgive you start a new leaf and start again so don't ever let the sins to kind of like make you freeze on the spot or to not um keep going forward okay so now we're going to move on to talking about the different types of istighfar so we've mentioned the first one which is the most basic form a seek forgiveness from allah and there's another one which is astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh which basically means i seek your forgiveness i seek forgiveness from allah and i repent to you and um, that's another form and that's slightly higher than the previous one and then we've got astaghfirullah wa ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum wa atubu ilayh I seek the forgiveness of Allah, there is no true God except Allah, the ever-living, the self-subsistent, and I turn to him in repentance. This is slightly higher than the one previous, and this is in Riyadh al-Salihin, 1874. I will link all of these types of istighfar down below, so you can be able to copy and paste it or put it on your notes or whatever. So, the hadith goes, the messenger of Allah وسلم, said, he who says, the dhikr I just mentioned previously, his sins will be forgiven even if he would have run away from the battlefield while he was engaged in fighting for the cause of Allah. Bear in mind, running away from the battlefield is one of the biggest sins. So, subhanAllah, this dhikr basically can forgive some of your biggest sins, subhanAllah. And the next best, this is the best type of istighfar and most of you are probably very aware of it in your daily athkar. So it goes, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqatani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma istata'atu a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu abuhu laka bi ni'matika aliyya wa abuhu bi dhambi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru al-dhunuba illa anta. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. There is no true God except you. You have created me and I am your slave. And I hold on to your covenant as far as I can. I seek refuge in you from the evil of what I, have, what I, what I have done. I acknowledge the favors that you have bestowed upon me, and I confess my sins. Pardon me, for none but you has the power to pardon. There's also Riyadh al-Salihin, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he who he who supplicates in these terms during the day, with firm belief in it, and dies on the same day before the evening, he will be one of the dwellers of Jannah. And if anyone supplicates in these terms during the night with firm belief in it and dies before the morning, he will be one of the dwellers of Jannah.
Allah, Allah says that if we, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if we do this type of dhikr, which is the best, which is considered the best type of istighfar, um, with firm belief, we have Jannah. We have Jannah. Let's actually just take a moment and actually deep down. SubhanAllah. Making this istighfar, we firm belief in it. We get Jannah, SubhanAllah. Jannah, like this is not just something that we just throw around like this is a huge reward this is like everlasting this is like where there is no sorrows where there's no sadness where you get everything you want where there's just tranquility peace you get to meet Allah like Allah, may Allah Allah was all to meet him uh, but yeah I don't know if you don't if after you've listened to this and you don't engage in istighfar I don't know I don't know if you do want Jannah because if you, if you did want Jannah you would try to um Sorry, I'm I'm just literally like actually in awe of how easy it is. SubhanAllah, how Allah made it easy for us. But yeah, if we want Jannah, inshallah, we should dwell into this. SubhanAllah. And also like, also made me think that um in the previous hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we narrated by Abu Huraira in Riyadh al 1870, he said, I swear by Allah that I seek Allah's pardon and turn to him in repentance more than 70 times a day. In other narrations, hundred times, this is absolutely crazy. This is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the best of creation. If he's seeking forgiveness, what about me? Like I need a lost forgiveness. So it's another reason, like, to actually engage in this. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam engaged in this, also it's part of Sunnah and it also shows that how in need we are of it. Subhanallah. Okay, so that's basically on this episode. And if you have taken anything away from this, is just do it. Don't let shaitan stop you from making a stick far. Make a stick far whatever you've done. Always believe, always think positive of Allah. And I think Istighfar also allows us to do that. Allows us to think positive of Allah that says, Oh, actually, my Lord will forgive me. It doesn't matter what I've done now. I've sought forgiveness. I'm not I'm trying I'm gonna try not to do it again. And moving forward, that's bas- that's basically it. Um so yeah, I hope you all benefited from that and I hope that Allah makes us all amongst the people whom he loves, the people who constantly repent to him, people who constantly turn back to him and people who are able to enter Jannatul Firdaus through any doors that we want, subhanAllah, and that we get this huge immense reward that Allah is promising us here if we seek forgiveness that he shall grant us guidance under which rivers flow and we pray that Allah makes us amongst the people who he grants that too i mean so one section one more segment i am going to introduce to my podcast now because our whole name is hidayah podcast and that basically means guidance right and as i've already reinforced a lot that the guidance the biggest guidance that we have is the quran subhanahu wa ta'ala what i want to do is to kind of like open the quran at random places um and then see what allah wants us to hear today so i'm gonna grab the Quran. Actually, I'm gonna grab because I've annotated this English one. So, whatever is highlighted or whatever is like sticking out that I've put in a sticky note, that's what I'm gonna recite. So, um, Bismillah. Okay, there's a lot here that stood out. Is this is Surah Nur, verse four? Oh my god, this is crazy, guys. You won't believe this. No, this is subhanAllah. Sorry, <laughs> I should have probably said subhanAllah. Okay, it's ayah 4. Those who accuse chaste women of fornication but fail to produce four witnesses should be flogged 80 lashes and never accept the witness statement again. There are major sinners, except those who later repent and reform themselves. God is forgiving, kind. Actually, I honestly don't know what to say. Like, I'm just in awe of how Allah is and how He's, how His being is. He's so subtle and latif, and He's so kind, and He's just the best. And I really hope that ayah is of guidance for all of us, and that we take it in. And that we also learn to not spread rumors if there's not evidence, and that we always remember that Allah is forgiving the kind. I hope you guys benefited from this episode, episode, and inshallah, I will see you on the next one.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته